I've read that book ten times. <laughs> <laughs> now, I love a bit of Oscar Wilde, I suppose. He always does it for me. <laughs> oh, Wilde. The only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. Exactly. <laughs> Wilde couldn't have put it better himself. <laughs> well, it was him who said that, actually, Father. Yes, yes, but... I don't think he'd have said it in that kind of ladylike way. <laughs> <laughs> You're a charmer, Father. <laughs> Miss Clark, I don't suppose you'd sign a copy of the latest. I'd be delighted. <laughs> um, Father Ted Cre No, um, just Ted Crilly. Don't, don't bother about the father, actually. I envy you, really, Father. You must have great peace of mind being a priest. That's what I'd love. A feeling of serenity. Oh, I have serenity coming out of my years. <laughs> Too much serenity, really. <laughs> Bit of excitement that suit me down to the ground. <laughs> Thanks for the autograph. I have to go. We have some nuns coming to visit us on the island. We're all very busy. Oh, OK, Father. Thank you. Look at the book. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Father Curly. Uh, going up. Thanks. <laughs> well. Good look at the book again. Thank you very much, Father. Bye. Well, hello again. Ah, hello. We have to stop meeting like this. <laughs> Goodbye again. Good look at the book. Sick. Good luck with the book. <laughs> please change, please, please change. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with thee. Let's start out. Oh, here we go. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> priest here. Oh, well, that's extraordinary. I think someone's trying to keep us together. <laughs> I've rented a cottage on the island, you see, but it's not ready yet. So the builders suggested I stay here for the night. Is that OK? Oh, this is amazing. We, we were both going the same way. <laughs> well, yes, of course, you'd be very welcome to stay oh. the night. Hello, Father. I see you've met your guest. <laughs> Mrs Doyle, Miss Clark will be staying the night. Will you show her where the spare room is? What? Will you show her to the spare room? Well, yes, it's just that I was going to make some tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do that later. I think tea is a bit common for Miss Clark's tastes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. <laughs> have a shower. I, I mean, have a shower if you want. <laughs> I mean, I don't want you to have a shower. I just mean that... You might like to get out of your clothes. No, obviously, that's no concern of mine. <laughs> uh, uh, Mrs Doyle. <laughs> Ted. <laughs> Who was that, Ted? Tugel, what do you think you're doing? I was hiding, Ted. Hiding from who? Hiding from your one. I heard her coming in, so I just jumped in behind the chair. Dougal, she, she's only a woman. <laughs> I don't know very many women, Ted. Dougal, what about your mother? 
<laughs> my mother. She's hardly what you'd call a, a, a woman, Ted. She's not like one of the women you see on the telly, like uh, like the gladiator. She wouldn't be one of them, Ted. Well, I, uh, I'm sure that's their loss. What about Mrs. Doyle? She's a woman. I ah, know, Ted, come on. Yes, she is, Dougal. She's every bit as much a woman as one of the gladiators or the lady who runs Pakistan. What you mean is that she's not attractive in the conventional sense. And you can't think like that anymore, Dougal. Anyway, who's that one you were talking to, Ted? Hm. She's a novelist. I was at her book signing. She's taken a cottage on the island. Very sophisticated lady. <laughs> Father, I'm sorry. I just got a bit of a shock. Come on now, Father. <laughs> this is Father Hackett. <laughs> he gets a bit confused sometimes. <laughs> Come on, Father. No, not your room. Not your room. No. Oh. Arse! Frank! Arse! Dougal, give me the cards. Quickly. Arse! Frank! Drink! What colour, Ted? Blue. Quickly, Dougal. Arse! The old blue has a great calming effect on him. <laughs> that's right, that's Miss Clark. Dougal. Woman! <laughs> yes, it is a woman, Father. Right on the button. Well, have a lovely stay then. Oh, Dougal. Ah, good idea, Ted. You'd thrown out the ones you couldn't get through. <laughs> no, no, Dougal. I was just arranging them in alphabetical order. <laughs> You're uh, bringing Father Jack out for a walk, then? Ah, oh, yeah, I suppose so. Uh, do you want to come at all? Ah, uh, no, no. I'd, uh, I'd better stay here and uh, prepare for the nuns. Here we are, Father. It's a beautiful day out. Me arse. Would you like it? <laughs> Manual or automatic, Father? Um, automatic, I think. It's a nice day. Might as well take it easy. That's right, Dougal. You take your time. Fair enough. <laughs> well, Father, I never thought we'd have anyone like her staying here. Hmm? Oh, Miss Clark. Yes, it's very exciting, isn't it? A famous novelist here. You've never read any of her books, have you, Father? Actually, I'm a bit of a fan. That's where I was the other day, at her book signing. Well, I'm very surprised to hear that, Father. I didn't think you'd like that sort of thing. <laughs> I read a bit of one of them once. God, I couldn't finish it. The language, unbelievable. Well, it's, it's a bit gritty, but that's the modern world, Mrs. Doyle. Well, it was a bit much for me, Father. Feck this and feck that. <laughs> yes, Mrs. Doyle. You big bastard. Oh, dreadful language. You big hairy arse. You big fecker. Fierce stuff. And, of course, the F word, Father. The bad F word. Worse than feck. You know the one I mean? Yes, I do, Mrs. Doyle. F you. F your F and Y. Oh, I don't know why they have to use language like that. I stick this F and pitchfork up your bolo. That was another one. Oh, yes. I see what you mean, Mrs. Doyle. Bastard this and bastard that. You can't move for the bastards in her novels. It's one to all bastards. Is it, Mrs. Doyle? You bastard, anyway. you fecker, you bollocks. Get your bollocks out of my face. I'm just trying to be Yes, you, you just go and prepare for the nuns. Ride me sideways was another one. There we go. Ah, Miss Clark. <laughs> How did you sleep? Oh, like a log. It's so peaceful here. God, I need a bit of peace after the year I've had. <laughs> I see. I've had a rough time of it recently, Father. My husband left me for another woman. Oh, it was my fault, I suppose. The sex was getting a little boring and I did nothing to spice it up. <laughs> Isn't that always the way? <laughs> 
Near the end, I tried a few things. I used to dress up in really revealing lingerie, and when he came through the door, I leapt on top of him and had sex right there in the hall. <laughs> so you had a good sleep then? <laughs> yes, thank you. Oh, God, I'm sorry, Father. I've probably shocked you. <laughs> go, go away with you. I've heard far more shocking things down through the years in confession. Uh... <laughs> future father oh, I used to think about it the future and then it became the present so I uh, <laughs> I thought about it quite often then and then it was in the past so I, I didn't think about it that much do you like Dostoevsky oh him yes yes he's uh, he's one of my favorites I, I must have read that book for ten times I see you're reading it again there's a bookmark here on page seven <laughs> Feel his sense of commitment wane towards the end. Yes. <laughs> when did you feel that began to happen? Oh, towards the end, you know. <laughs> After he'd finished writing about the crime bit and moved on to the punishment, you know. I felt it dragged a bit there for me. You know. <laughs> I always thought that if Joyce, Keats, and Lawrence were sitting in a room together and Dostoevsky walked in, <laughs> there'd be a hell of a fight for the last piece of pudding. <laughs> somebody about these things. <laughs> My husband. There was a man who was really afraid of Virginia Woolf. <laughs> well, why was... Was she following or something? <laughs> oh, Father. I... You... You wouldn't like to come up to the cottage later for a little drink. Or maybe some more book talk. That would be delightful. Sorry? I'd be delighted at it. <laughs> I'll see you later then, Father. About seven. Seven o'clock. <sighs> seven, right? <laughs> it's only a drink. So you'd, uh, you'd no trouble getting here? <laughs> no, no. I drove Sister Julia in the Renault. Sister Margaret took the Mini. <laughs> it's great having the old car all the same, isn't it? <laughs> Anyone for more tea? <laughs> Sister Margaret, do you want something? No, thank you, Father. Sorry? Ah, she's fine, Father. At what time does the Mass tonight start, Father? Seven o'clock. Oh, that's grand. We don't want to be too late. Well, seven isn't too... Ah! Uh, yes, yes, it's... There's just uh, seven o'clock. I, I, I may have to leave early. During the Mass? Oh, you couldn't leave during the Mass. <laughs> it's just that, you see, um... Sister Julia says that you say a lovely Mass. She said that you said one of the nicest Masses she ever heard. Oh, and Sister Concepta said that last year's Mass here was fabulous. She said she'd give it ten out of ten, and she's very hard to please. She's seen you do, what is it, about 50 Masses since then? <laughs> Let's show Father Crilly the photographs, Teresa. You like these, Father? <laughs> oh, there's you saying the Mass here last year. And that's you saying the Mass the year before. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yes, that's your sister-in-law's funeral. That's my personal favourite. <laughs> that's when you had the beard. <laughs> Actually, Father... You couldn't sign a few of them for us, could you? The photographs? Yes. All right. Oh, could you put on my one, Two Sister Assumpta? Sure. Oh. <laughs> uh, Father, Sister Margaret has a question. Yes? Where'd you get your ideas for your sermons? Where'd you get your ideas for your sermons? <laughs> oh, just... Overheard conversations, the news, whatever. Listen, I have to be honest here. I might not be able to. You have a question. <laughs> What's your most embarrassing moment, Saint Mass? Oh, well, I suppose it was the time I forgot my sister-in-law's name. <laughs> that got me a bit hot under the collar. <laughs> Is, 
I might not be able to say this evening's mass. What, Father? I have something quite important to do. Not more important than saying mass, Father. It's just someone I know is, is dying. Oh, dear. Is it serious? <laughs> oh, yes. In this case, the person dying is quite seriously ill. It's, it's someone we know very well. Nuns! Nuns! Reverse! 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 No, Father Maguire. Father Crilly was just telling us about your friend dying. Who was that, Ted? <laughs> um. Oh, uh, old Jim. Ah, is he dying? Poor old Jim. He won't like that. <laughs> He's terribly down about it. Wait a second. Jim Halpin. Yes. Oh, I was just talking to him earlier and he didn't say a thing about it. <laughs> well, that's Jim. Brave is not the word. He's just outside. Hold on there and I'll get him. What? What's he doing outside? He should be at home in bed. I oh, know, you see, I met him earlier. He just wanted to lend us some sugar. Hold on there. <laughs> at a moment like this, this man needs peace. So just don't be... <laughs> Hello, Jim. Hello, father. Hello, sisters. Now, Jim, you never told me you were ill. Huh? I had a bit of a cold a few weeks back. A cold? Well, Ted said you were dying. Dying? Oh, no. I don't think so, anyway. <laughs> well, it's just I was talking to Dr. Sinnott, and he said... <laughs> He said that you that you might be dying, but he wasn't 100% sure himself, so don't go off worrying yourself unnecessarily. <laughs> oh, mighty, I'd better give him a call. I, I wouldn't go calling him, Jim. And why not? He, he can't use the phone. He's gone deaf. <laughs> Dr. Sinnott's gone deaf. That's terrible. This is all right. There he is now. <laughs> Dr. Sinnott! Doc! He heard that all right, Ted. <laughs> Doctor, would you have a moment? Actually, actually, wait! I just remembered! <laughs> Jim is not dying. <laughs> and Dr. Sinnott's not gone deaf. I was thinking of two completely different people. So you will be able to say tonight's mass, then, Father. <laughs> yes, yes, I will, of course. <laughs> Thanks to Father Dougal for clearing up that little misunderstanding. <laughs> Ted. Ted, you're hurting me. <laughs> All right, listen, Dougal. I'm going to have to go straight after this. You'll have to look after the nuns. Fair enough, Ted. What will I do with them? Whatever you want. Just try not to kill them or anything. <laughs> <laughs> that, Ted. Uh, remember Sister Janita? Oh, yeah. That was a bit too close for comfort, all right, yeah? Well, just be careful this time, Mark. Oh, God. Are they all in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like peas in a pub, Ted. Pod. <laughs> right, let's go. See you later. OK, good luck, Ted. Again, have you, Tom? No, fella. Just my money. I just didn't want to fill out the forms. <laughs> you came. Come 
in and have a drink, Father Curly. <laughs> I think I might have everything you want in here. Oh. <laughs> it's great, isn't it, Ted? What are you doing here? What? Well, you know, we were invited. Invited? Yeah, same as you, Ted. Can't have a house warming on your own, can you? No, no, I suppose you can't. Very short maths tonight, Father. We were all a bit disappointed, weren't we, sisters? We might not be coming back next year. They say Father Kippet does a good long mass. Three hours he does on a good night since his stroke. That's value for money. Will you see, sisters? Oh, I'm sorry, Father. I'm in a hurry. How do you get these open? Night, sister. Night, sister. Back in it. Night, sister. Now, father. Father, before you go, could I have a quick word? Oh, right. Uh, Dougal, you go on ahead. I'll be back in a while. Right, so, Ted. Would you like me to put something else on? No, no, what you're wearing is fine. <laughs> Would you like another drink, Father Curly? Yes. Yeah. It was nice talking to you today. Well, if you if you can't talk to a priest, who can you talk to? <laughs> We're taught how to listen, you know. <laughs> not that we had listening classes or anything, because <laughs> it's not as if we didn't know how to listen before. <laughs> it's, it's just being there and somebody talking to you, which is quite easy, and <laughs> unless you're deaf, <laughs> there's not an awful lot of work involved there. No, no swatting for exams with you all listening. <laughs> Father, do you remember me telling you about reaching a crossroads in my life? Yes, I do. Well, what do you think I should do? I need advice. This crossroads, is it, uh, is it busy at all? You know, Father, that's interesting. I think one road leads back to where I was. Now, that's a busy road. Oh, it's filled with people and bright lights and traffic. <laughs> the other road is a quiet country road with peace and serenity and fulfilment. See. Which one would you choose, Father? Well, it's, um, that's an easy one. <laughs> yes, I suppose it is obvious. Bright lights, glamour, film premieres. Well, no, I was thinking... parties, drugs, busts, Las no, no, Vegas. No, father, 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 father. Sorry, sorry. What I was going to say was, I know I've made the right choice. I know you have, Polly. <laughs> and I'm with you all the way. I'm going to become a nun. <laughs> oh, feck. <laughs> feck, feckin'... Marvellous Jews. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was talking to Sister Julia earlier. You know, she's 97 years of age. <laughs> Did you ever think what it would be like to be a 97-year-old nun, Father? No. <laughs> I miss Craggy Island. It's silly, I know. I've only been here a day. <laughs> but I'll always remember you. In 20 years' time, when I'm looking in my prayer book, I'll probably still be thinking about Father Ted Curly. <laughs> Crilly. What? Father Ted Crilly, nice to meet you. <laughs> oh no, Dougal, not again. Sorry, Ted. Uh, I was just looking for some change. <laughs> oh, well, back to the everyday grind. 